Hey guys, and welcome back to The Lettered Classroom. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Bridget Spackman, and I am a multi-age classroom teacher for Upper Elementary in Pennsylvania. I also taught kindergarten for four years in Alabama. And on this channel, I like to talk all things management, classroom, and great teaching ideas. So be sure to hit that subscribe button to get more of those in the future. I am really, really excited because I've been planning this video for quite some time, and I feel like I've never been able to get it done. But in this video today, I am so excited to be sharing with you all of the different types of behavior management systems that I used over the past six years of me teaching. And what's really interesting is that I've actually used something different every single year except for two years. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting kind of seeing some of the different things that I tried and I'm going to kind of talk to you guys about why I ended up changing things. Um, so hopefully you kind of get a better idea of it. It's really fun and interesting to see all of the different types of behavior management out there. At the beginning of the year I feel like a lot of the times we are all struggling with trying to get those behavior management systems in place and really making sure that our students are staying focused so that we can teach them all of the great content that we have to teach them. So I'm going to go ahead and dive in. So let's talk about my first year teaching. My first year teaching, I was in kindergarten in Alabama. Uh, I was fresh out of college. I had never subbed before. So <laughs> I did what pretty much everyone else was doing. I think my first year was a lot about survival. And so in my very first year of teaching, I decided to do ta-da <laughs> so this is the behavior management system i use i think a clip chart is just the classic behavior management system that is definitely out there um i was hernandez back then so i was miss hernandez's hikers and uh, um i went with a classic clip chart with clip charts you have two different options you can have one chart that only goes down it's only the negatives um which is what this was and then there are some where the kids have the option of also going up a couple of spaces. I went with this one. This was the classic. This is kind of what everyone else was using. So this was pretty easy for me to kind of figure out. Um, the kids all started on ready for a journey because we were hikers. It was adorable. And the kids had all of their little clips. So they had their clips, they had little names on it. And I think at that time, like I even had like little pretty clip art things that they had their names on it. It was super adorable. And uh, the kids would clip down. So there were different options here. So the, they had like three chances. So ready for the journey is how they started every single day. And if they had to clip down, they were, whoa, watch your step. Like, be careful, you're gonna slip, you're gonna fall. We're all hiking, right? This was a, you're gonna have about five minutes out of recess type thing. And then I can't remember exactly how much time with this one was. Maybe it wasn't five, maybe it was like two minutes. Two minutes and then maybe five minutes was this one. So this one was careful, stay on the trail. <laughs> so then this was five minutes out of recess. Um, and then this one was, they had to have silent lunch and we had to make a phone call to parents. So this one was, you've gotten lost but this is your classic like clip chart right everything has a consequence there was a consequence for each one the kids kind of knew exactly what was going to happen if they were to clip down um there was no type of guessing of well you're going to do this or you're going to do this you're going to lose this um it was very here it is point blank and they clipped down for the day they got to start at the very beginning every single day i mean it worked for me for my first year it worked for me kind of <laughs> I will tell you that I am a very, very lazy teacher, which is probably not the best thing, <laughs> but I was really bad at putting the clips up and I was really bad about getting them to move their clip down. So I would deal with the behavior and then I would forget to have them move their clip down or I wouldn't check them or it was just something. I'm a lazy teacher y'all and I'm really, really sorry. But like, so I, I did like this. It just wasn't working the way that I wanted it to work. And it was, I mean, it was super cute. So this was it. This was kind of my behavior management system in a nutshell. It was just a clip chart for my first year. Nothing fancy. So now let's talk second year. So in my second year, I went through some professional development. The school offers some professional development. And then they said, you know what? We really need for you guys to focus on the positives, not the negatives. So I thought, oh my gosh, I can't believe I've been doing this. You know, you just dive into what everyone is saying and it's almost like we always jump the gun. <laughs> like, I'm always like, oh, I gotta change it. I gotta do this because I heard this one person say this. So 
I'll explain all that later on. <laughs> um, so my second year, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna change my system. They're telling me that I don't wanna show the negatives, that I only wanna focus on the positives. So I decided to do one of these little hanging jewelry file systems. You could do a hanger jewelry one. I think there's also like actual pocket charts out there, but this is the one that I used. Um, and this one is literally for jewelry. But what I did is I put my kids' names on it with a label. I did this as an example. They were much cuter labels back then. So I had their names on little labels. And this was only focusing on the positive. Every time I saw my kids doing something fantastic, I would give them one of these little bitty popsicle sticks. You see it? So uh, these are little short ones that you can get kind of at, at Michael's. Any type of craft store, they're these little bitty popsicle sticks. They're a lot shorter than the other ones. But the kids got to earn popsicle sticks. So if I saw somebody, I would always have these like in my pocket, and then I would just give them one. They would go and put it inside of their pocket chart. And the entire time, they're wanting to get a total of 10 um, popsicle sticks. That kind of brought into the thing of you can bundle them, we can tally them, that type of thing. It got them into practicing um, math as well. So I felt like, oh, this is such a great system because I'm also incorporating a lot of math inside of it as well. So this worked out good. Um, and I know you're probably wondering, but what about those behaviors where the kids were not doing the things that they wanted to do? I got you covered. I had this little system here. And on this, I had little tracking pages. So on this little tracking sheet, you're gonna see here that I had the kids' names on one side, and then I had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday up at the top. Then under each of those days for the kids' names, they had W, 2, 3, and 4. Each of these stood for something. So the W stood for a warning. The two was I gave you, you know, some chances. Now I'm circling your two. There was some type of a consequence to go along with it. It may have been that they sat out for recess. It may have been they had a tight in lunch. It just depended on, I can't specifically remember exactly how I did that, that part of it, but there was a consequence to it. And then three was you've had a lot of opportunities. And then four finally is always a phone call home to mom that we're just not having a very good day. This is how I kind of managed my I need to keep a track of how you're behaving in the classroom and you're not making those good choices. And then this was my display for wanting to show off the really good behaviors that I saw in the classroom. So now I know what you're thinking. What do they do with the popsicle sticks? So the kids, after they have bundled, have two bundles, so they have two bundles of five, um, they would turn them in and they would get to go to the treasure box. So I had a treasure box that, back then, which is actually now my son's toy box upstairs. It's a really pretty wooden one. So they had to have 10 popsicle sticks in order to be able to go to the treasure box. And they always loved to go to the treasure box because I had all kinds of little toys in there for them. So that's kind of the second year. So for the most part, I've really enjoyed this system. I think this system was really nice because it didn't display the negative behaviors. Kids weren't, you wouldn't have somebody walk into a room and automatically say, oh, I see Johnny's not having a good day. He's on, stay on the trail type deal, which is never what you want. You don't want it to be a spot where you're shaming your students. So, um, or that, at least that's my opinion. <laughs> um, so I didn't want to have something that displayed the negative behaviors. So I got rid of that chart. I liked this because it displayed positive behaviors. And then I also had this little record of being able to track behaviors that I was seeing inside of the classroom as far as them needing to make better choices. And this was like a very, I have it on paper. I can always go back and look at it. It was a really great system for me. In comes third year and I'm still a kindergarten teacher, still in Alabama, in the exact same school. My third year and my fourth, this was the two years that I actually did the exact same thing. My third and my fourth year, I absolutely loved. I loved my system. It worked so perfect for me. It worked perfect for my kids. It was simple, it was easy. It was nothing that I felt like I had to work for. These I had to work for. Like I had to remember to give these out, which I'm never really good about it. 
um, I had to, you know, remember to circle them down, which again, I'm not really good at. I told you guys that I'm a lazy teacher and I really, really am. And if you've been watching my channel for a little while, back when I first started blogging and talking about behavior management and I even started my whole YouTube channel and it was my last year in kindergarten that I did that. Um, you guys would have known about this. So uh, here is what I did and I absolutely loved it. I had a communication folder back then and my communication folder was red, but it was a lot like this. It was these really nice folders. It's called Nikki's folders. If you've ever heard of them, they have really great folders, but it was red. So it was my communication folder and inside of their communication folder, they had something that looked like this. And this was a simple behavior log and it had a calendar on it. Y'all, these are available in my store if you are wanting to go and get them. So definitely go and check them out if you are liking this system. So let me explain to you how this system worked. At the beginning of the year, I would always send home a management plan. So it looked like this. Here's this management plan. What it does is it talks about some of the skills, the, be the uh, behavior soft skills that we want students to be able to do. Um, explain what I would do inside of the square. And then it also talks down here just about how I grade them in their report cards. I felt like my first two years, I was the one giving the roles. I was the one that was, I was always in the one that was in control, if that almost makes sense. My third and my fourth year, I focused more on, I didn't really have rules. I had school rules. I used the three school rules that, you know, that my school that I was at had already built. It was kind of built into the student handbook. And that was respect your, respect adults, respect your peers and work hard. Three things that I felt like could fall, anything could fall underneath it. If a kid is throwing pencils, well, are you working hard? No. Are you respecting your peers because you're distracting them? No. So everything and anything f fell underneath those three rules. So I had those three rules displayed and then that was really about it. I didn't build classroom rules with them, but we talked about behaviors and it was more about making choices and it was more about let me help problem solve. Let me help you with this. So I also brought out my behavior wheel, which again is also another product that I have inside of my store. If you're curious and want to go and check that out. So I also had my behavior wheel and we went through and we talked about making choices and what are some of the better choices that we could make. And we brainstormed and we problem solved. I wanted to help kids be able to make choices for themselves and to teach them how to make those better choices. I felt like my first two years, I was always, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong, but I never took the time to really truly explain what they were doing wrong, why it was wrong, and what should they have done instead. So my third and my fourth year, I focused more on that, which I felt like was so much more powerful for them. So where this log comes into play is that my school had soft skills that were on the report cards, and they were there were six of them. It was complete assignments in a timely manner, works well with others, demonstrates uh, self-control, follows directions, respects the authority respects peers. So those were the six soft skills that I reported in our report card. So in my opinion, I said, you know what, if I'm putting in a report card, I also need to make sure that I'm keeping track of it. And I'm logging some of this information so that when I'm putting down their score as a three, two or one in their report card, I have evidence to back it up. So I put those down here at the very bottom. Those were the skills that we I had to report on the report card. And I said, you know what? You guys are just gonna keep this in your folder and every day at the end of the day, if you had a really great day, I'm gonna give you a stamp, a smiley face. You're gonna have it signed by your parents so that I can see that they saw how you were as far as your behavior that day. And then that's really about it. If a child was not demonstrating one of these down here at the bottom, so if I had given them plenty of warnings, if we had already talked about it, if I already showed them how to make a better choice and they were still not doing it, I would just say, hey, Johnny, I want you to go bring me your red folder. I've given you plenty of opportunities. So they would go give me their red folder. I would sit down with them for a minute and I would say, listen, Johnny, this is what I'm serving. Here is what you're doing right now. I've asked you multiple times to be able to stop doing this. I need to report this to your parents at this point. So then I would simply either put a number in there or I would write what the, what the behavior was depending on what I needed 
to tell parents. So I would write it in one of the little days and then parents in the little square that's inside of each day would just initial and then send it back to me. Here's the part which was like magical for me. I had data binders and in their data binders, there was a spot for me to be able to keep all of these behavior logs. So when I sat down for conferences, I would say, oh, look, we started off in August. Then in you know August, September, I'm noticing, oh, on Fridays, we were having really bad days, or maybe it was every other week. And it's the exact same situation that we're having over and over again. I would be able to show these to parents and I would have evidence to back it up because they initialed it. I did it every single day and it worked magically. Like it was absolutely perfect for the way that I like to lazy, do things and then it also worked for my parents because they were always in the know and i don't know it just it was like a perfect system for me i absolutely loved it and at the end of the day y'all i had my kids working like robots like they knew i would have one table go and grab their folders out of their mailbox they would take a seat they would open it up they would put their heads down they would have this out for me to just go stamp it and then they would go and pack up like it was like well-oiled machine i was so happy with this system. Now, I know you're wondering probably, well, where's the reward systems for the calendar? Here's how it worked. If the kids were able to get five, once they got five, they received a star. So I had little star stickers. Now they did not have to get them in a row, but every five smiley faces, they would get to go get a coupon. And the coupons were different things. It was bring in a teddy bear, you can bring in a pillow, you can have extra recess, you get to listen to music while you work, you get to use um, the iPad for the day. It, there was a ton of different options that the kids were able to use. They're very similar to the one that I'm about to show you here. Like I kept it in a little box like this that you can purchase at Michael's um, but the ones that I had last year I don't have them anymore I'm sorry but they had little pictures on them and the kids were just able to look at it and be able to pick it out and take it home so it was every five smiley faces so I had just like little stamps that I would use and every after every five I would put a star on it and that would show that that was their fifth smiley face again it didn't have to be in a row I didn't want to punish them for not having a good day like they're not perfect. They're they're never going to be perfect. And I didn't want them to think only the perfect kids are going to get rewards. I wanted to say, you know what? You got five smiley faces. Yeah, we had a couple of days that were a little rough, but I really liked how you turned those around and you were to have able to have more, um, more, ha you know, smiley face days. So every five smiley faces, I was able to give them a star and they would get to go and grab a coupon, which the kids really, really enjoyed. So I would always just have these out and I would have like when I would walk around at the end of the day to kind of give them their stamps. Um, if I signed their folder, they would have it down. If I looked at it, I said, all right, you can go pack up. I didn't give them anything because it had already been signed that day. I would stamp the other kids, give them their little smiley faces and I would count one, two, three, four, five and they would, I, I would give them their, their sticker star. And the kids were always really good about it they would say it's my fifth it's my fifth one it's my fifth one they were always so excited about it but I would always have my little coupon box opened up like at my small group table and the kids would just go and grab it themselves and I would just trust them with it and they were really good about it too Bridget why did you get rid of it well I'm about to tell you I had to get rid of this because I then after my fourth year moved to Pennsylvania and I am now in a school district where they like to have consistency, which I completely agree with. And I love the consistency. I love that my students can go to a special area teacher and they're gonna have the same behavior systems as I do. And my school's behavior system is Class Dojo. Um, if you're not familiar with Class Dojo, it is just an online program where you are able to log and talk, you know, kids can earn points and kids can have points taken away um, based on different behaviors. You can very specifically put what type of behaviors you're looking for. So if I only wanted to focus on the six for the report card, I can definitely add those in there. Everybody can see it. The kids can see it. The parents can see it. You can send messages to them. It is a really, really great system. I had struggled my last year with using it because again, I'm a lazy teacher. I'm not really good about stopping and logging those things because in my head, I'm in the moment. I'm wanting to teach. I'm like doing stuff. I'm walking around, I'm helping students. 
I ain't got time to sit there and put things in. <laughs> but I have gotten better about it. I'm kind of trying to teach myself and put myself into the habit of doing it. And this year I've actually been doing pretty well with it. So I've, I've been very happy with myself. So I know what you're asking is how did I like manage everything with it? So we decided to do classroom dojo and the kids could earn points if they were showing different things like pride or if they were showing some of the behaviors that we were seeing, like working well with others, there being a leader, that type of thing, I would award them points. If they were doing things like that were not acceptable and I've had still had those opportunities to be able to discuss with them, problem solve with them, use the wheel of choice with them, and they're continuing to make some of those behaviors, I would mark their points away from them. At the end of every week, we have black folders this year. At the end of every week, we had a dojo log. So this is what the dojo log looked like. And it was every single week, it was completely written out. What we would do is we would have the weekly percentage, we would write it in on Fridays, then we would have our initials to show that we're the ones that wrote it in. <laughs> and then we would have parent initials to show that the parents saw it and any comments that needed to be in there were written in there. Um, and this was something that they kept inside of their folder every single day. Now here's where we kind of did something a little bit extra with it um, because we wanted to give them some type of like rewards because of it. We decided to do dojo dollars. Um, it was guess like a classroom economy system that the kids would be able to get awarded money if they received uh, 90 if they received a hundred percent that week they would get three dollars okay if they received uh, a 90 to a 99 percent they would get twenty dollars 80 to 89 percent they would get one dollar anything below 80 percent they got nada so we gave them dollars they would then get to turn those dollars in to receive coupons. In these coupons, they were priced to different things, you know, having lunch with the teacher, so the teachers would buy them pizza, that was like a $30. Um, having extra recess was $20, but the kids would be able to go out and they would be able to purchase coupons to be able to earn things. Some of these were as simple as you can buy a get a coupon to get a new gel pen or a mechanical pencil or something to that extent. Some of them were like you get to teach morning meeting, you get to plan morning meeting, um, you will get to listen to music, you get to bring a pillow, just different things that we thought the kids would really, really enjoy. Um, I will also say again, I'm a very lazy teacher. I didn't do well with this. I would forget to do it on Fridays or it would get really busy on Fridays and it just wasn't something that I was really good at doing. Um, I will say that I don't do this anymore. <laughs> so we do not do dojo dollars anymore and I am very, very happy with it. So I have tweaked a couple of things with it. We no longer do dojo dollars because y'all, I couldn't do it. Like I can't keep up with it. The kids couldn't keep up with their money. It was just a hot mess. So we no longer do dojo dollars. We still do the percentages, but our calendar looks a little bit different. And this is just a blank calendar at the end of the week. It's very similar to the ones that I used in kindergarten. It has a spot for the, me to be able to put in the percentages for their classroom dojos at the end of the week, which now I have created a very nice little system. For Friday mornings in their morning message, I tell them that they have to turn in their black folders into me. And so I have their folders pretty much all day long. Sometimes during my last special at the very end of the day, I will really quick write their percentages down, give them their folders, then they will go and start to get packed up for the end of the day. Now, here's what we do as far as rewards for them. Uh, at the end of the month, if they've received 80% or higher, we're gonna have different options for them. So there might be one room that might have arts and crafts. There might be another that will just go out and have recess, extra recess time. And then there will be one room where if, you know, whoever many we don't have, we'll, also, we'll have to stay in and just work and they will not get the option of getting the reward. So it's a little bit easier because then that way I don't have to keep up with anything. The kids don't have to keep up with anything. It's something that happens at the end of the month super easy nothing crazy which is what I like <laughs> it works perfect for me that is pretty much it that is my behavior management system I like what we're doing this year it's pretty easy it keeps the parents in the know it's very consistent with everyone that's in the building so the parents kind of are already really used to it it's not like I have to sit here and explain everything to them but I also really 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 loved 
my system that I used my lap, my third and fourth year in kindergarten. I would really like to know what system that you are using inside of your classroom. So be sure to leave a comment down below. Let me know what kind of behavior management system you are using down in your classroom right now. Also let me know which one of these systems that you like the best. I can't believe I've had like so many different <laughs> management systems over the years, but you have to kind of work with things and tweak things and figure out what works for you as a teacher, as a person, because we're all different and we all don't need to do it the exact same way. I would never expect everyone to do it the way that I'm doing it right now. So I would love to know what you guys are doing. Be sure to leave a comment down below. If you are new to this channel, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also make sure to hit that bell so that you can get notifications for when I upload new videos. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed listening to me and my behavior management systems over the years. Give the video a thumbs up guys and I will see you guys later on. Instagram.